What do you get when you combine a herd of happy cattle, a couple of happy chefs, a happy farmer, and a custom grain blend, and my favorite steakhouse? The answer, lots of flavor on Food Country. Prince Edward Island is world renowned for our pristine fisheries offshore and our famous potatoes onshore. But we also produce some of the finest beef on the planet on farms like Darlene Sanford's and Mont Carmel. But that grain and that extra energy that's in the ration, that's actually what helps to bring out the, the genetic potential for marbling that these cattle have. North America's beef grading system is based on the simple fact that fat is flavor. The more fat there is in a steak, the better it tastes, the higher it's grade, and the more it's worth. Darlene knows this very well. What are some of the things that you do to drive quality? How do you make sure that the beef is as good as it can be? Well, one of the, the things that we do is the, the feed that we feed to the cattle. Feeding them as, as good a quality of feed as we can find. The ingredients in our, our recipe are as good as what, as what we can get. That's the first thing. The other thing is keeping them comfortable, keeping them happy. Uh, you don't hear any mooing. That's because they're not hungry and they have water and they have fresh straw and they're happy. If you hear them mooing, something's wrong. So when you don't hear any mooing, that's a good thing. I don't recognize Did that Did you one. hear that one? I don't think that's one of mine. That I don't sounds like a chef to me. <laughs> Darlene, I gotta ask you something. Come, come here for a yeah. second. I mean, I drive down country roads all the time. You mm -hmm. see these long rows of white stuff. <laughs> and I always wonder, what is it? What's going on in those bags? It's, uh, it's basically a way to preserve grass for the winter months so that the cattle have something to feed when it's cold so that we don't have to go move a snowbank so we can find some grass. Sure. Everywhere that this has been chopped, like all the ends of these stems, Yeah the natural juices come out of the grass and that's what helps in the fermentation process and it actually drops the pH of the grass and it preserves it. That's what saves it for winter. There are a lot of factors that influence the flavor of beef. Certainly the type of cattle is one of them and how that cattle is raised, but without question what the cattle eat has a very profound impact on the final flavor. So Darlene has a secret recipe for her feed. A scoopful of last summer's perfectly preserved farm fresh grass. A scoopful of tasty, nutritious grain. And since this is PEI, a few scoops of local potatoes. This recipe is why Darlene's beef, in fact, most of PEI's beef, grades out at prime, the highest designation possible. All this talk about what cattle like to eat has me thinking about what I like to eat. Steak, thick, juicy steak. It's feeding time and I know exactly where to go. This is my favorite steakhouse and not just because the beef is local. Chef Ross Monroe likes to age his meat too. Bulk of what we serve is wet aged. Most beef is aged wet. It's, it's wrapped up in a bag like this and it's in there with its juice and it's an impermeable barrier and it just sits there for upwards of what, four weeks? Uh, pretty much, yeah, four weeks is a limit. I think the CFA allows sure. you know, beef to, uh, to be in a platter bag for 30 days. Yeah, and the, the beef itself has a natural enzyme in the flesh. Right. And once you kill it, that enzyme gets to work basically tenderizing Absolutely the meat. Absolutely does. Yeah, so it has it's its own natural bacteria sort of thing. You could say that it's a form of controlled rot. It is. <laughs> in a good way. In a very good in a way. Very, very in a good very, good very good way. way. Today, most beef is wet aged. It's safe and it works. But Ross also dry ages, the old school way. It's a much trickier process, but the results are worth it. And why age meat at all? What's the point? It condenses and dries it, right? I mean, that's a, it's just like anything. If you take 
you know, fruit, for example, you take an apricot, right? Apricot tastes great, it's sweet when it's fresh, but you dry it, it just concentrates flavor. So this is what we're doing here. We're concentrating this flavor, and I guess the, the ultimate goal for us is that almost that best combination of, for us anyway, on the palate is the blue cheese and beef. Without ever having blue cheese on your beef, it has sure. that, that nuttiness, that acidity, that sort of spike on the palate. Sure. So what, what do you say? Maybe we do a, um, a comparison. Absolutely. Maybe a wet age and a dry age. Yeah, absolutely. Grill them up, try them out, see what you, you think. You bet. This is a big moment. It is. May I do the honors? Absolutely. Okay, 45 degrees to the, on this grill. You bet. There we go. Ready to rock. And I'll do the second one. Ross, you're running a very busy, very successful steakhouse. In your experience, what is the biggest thing that drives guest satisfaction when they order a steak? The way they want it, the way they want to cook. So get the done this right. Get the done this right and right the first time. Redo's not a great thing, especially in the steakhouse. You know, if somebody wants a medium and they're eating a 20 ounce steak, we send it out. You know, meat rare. Okay, I can, you know, we can, we can deal with that. We can send out a meat well 20 ounce. And they want it medium. Uh, we're, we're down 20 minutes. Now look at the different colors here. Again, you can really see the difference between the dry age and the wet age. It's going to be interesting to see which it one of be. these I prefer. It will be, it'll be great. I mean, this great is what I'm used to. This is what most people in North America are, right. are used to, wet aged. Just about every steakhouse, that's how they do it. To have a dry age program going on in-house, using this incredible beef that you're sourcing, that's the goods. Okay, to make this a true taste test, I'm going to blindfold myself and see, A, can I tell the difference between the two, dry and wet aged, and B, which one do I actually like better? Let's see how it goes. Okay, so here I have two different kinds of beef, both ribeyes, both my favorite cut, one dry aged, one wet aged, I don't know which is which. rich, it's beefy, it's got that beautiful fat that just sort of bases it away. It's really, really tasty. It's familiar too, so I'm betting that one was the wet age, which would make this the dry age. Let's see. I think I'm right. This one is, um, it's denser, it's still tender, it's definitely beefier. That's a damn good steak. Second one was dry aged. How'd I do? Spot on. Right on. <laughs> Here we are at the steak altar, the marbling shrine, huh? Excellent. You know, it's a wonderful piece of meat and uh, in your hands it's gonna be a great steak. Yeah, well it is that kind of meat. It demands respect, eh? So now it's my turn. It is. I'm out of here. Michael, always good to see you. Thanks, Ross. Thanks for having us today. Exactly. It's time to get grilling. <laughs>